Hi guys, welcome to the channel. So today we're talking about building palettes. How to build a palette. I've been getting quite a few questions about, you know, different kinds of palettes. Can you mix watercolors and um, where to start with a palette and all those kinds of things. So, and we will get into this painting as part of a limited palette kind of painting uh, later on in the video. But I just wanted a little bit of time here in the intro to kind of talk you through um, my kind of ideas for this video and this little series of videos. So I am releasing three videos today. They were all sort of part of the um, kind of part of this palette building journey for the past couple of weeks but I wanted to put the pastel storage one in a separate video and then the Roman Schmall palette also in a separate video so it's easier to reference them. Uh, but in this video we are going to sort of go through my favorite palette um, kind of colors and and how and why I came to that and so I do have a few other videos on um, this kind of thing so I won't go into that too much and then we'll jump into a limited palette uh, painting and then I want to introduce you to a new palette that is uh, a new plein air palette so and then we'll do a painting with that as well so I'm really excited I've been working like crazy to get these things done and then there will also be a shop update today at 4 30 Eastern Standard Time so uh, if you want you can jump to the end of the video and get all the info about that and then just come back and enjoy the video Okay, so I have been getting quite a few questions on, you know, building a palette, different types of brands and how to actually go about deciding on colors. So I think that one of the first things to understand, or at least this is how I created my sort of color palette that I, I kind of figured out how I, um, kind of a template of how to customize a palette that I would enjoy. So the first thing I did was look at the um, kind of a traditional, you know, 12 color palette. So you can see here, this one is by uh, Schmincke and you have the, you know, warm and cool uh, yellows, the warm and cool uh, reds, blues, and then greens, and then neutrals. So I kind of took that and then I couldn't really mix things with that. So I took that and kind of created my own things out of that template. So you can see here that I have my warm and cool yellow right here. So I've got the cool yellow is the lemon yellow and then my warm yellow, I use French ochre. So I'm really replacing that warm yellow with a neutral. And then the other uh, color that I like to use. It's not really a color, but this is the Winsor & Newton Gold Ink. And I also use this one as a warm yellow. So um, yeah, you can see there that, that those are really my yellows that I prioritize. And then I also usually use the ink with that dip pen that I just showed you. And I can link that below as well. So then I have my reds and I actually use shell pink as my warm red and then I use opera rose as my cool pink. So a lot of people have questions about the light fastness of this but the magenta under under the hot pink is light fast and so I figure that like good vintage things it will age and you'll still get that you know pretty color it just won't be as intense. And I, I also put down there potter's pink. Um, and then I'm doing the greens now. So this one is Compose Green from Holbein. And then as my warm green, and then I really love this one from Daniel Smith. This is Fuchsite. So this would be my cool green. And um, yeah, so you can see that I'm building the palette off sort of the traditional palette. But what I did, and this is the Schmincke Cobalt Turquoise. 
but what I did was when I was trying to mix things with that more traditional palette every mix that I got was muddy and um, I could never get to the vibrancy or to like the subtle nuances of really pretty um, muted colors that I wanted so I had to kind of start digging around and looking for okay what can I replace this with what can I replace this with and so it took me quite a few years to figure this out and I've really condensed it to these are my favorites so in this row we have the Daniel Smith Indigo, Daniel Smith Hematite and the Daniel Smith Sedona instead of the Burnt Sienna. And I will list these colors down below but I've gone into them quite a lot in other videos so um, there's you know plenty of info on the channel about these colors and in like some palette swatches. Um, but yeah this is, well I'll show you in a minute some of the mixes that I uh, use these colors for and then we'll do a painting and we'll just use four of these colors um, and yeah I'll show you you know why I really love these colors and I could do you know a painting every video with these colors and come out with a different palette and a whole completely different feeling and that's why I love them I feel like with that more traditional palette I feel like every painting I would do would feel the same and would have kind of the same colors but this is such a broad spectrum of um, color so yeah I just really enjoy it for that so I'm just showing you here so I'm mixing the lemon yellow and the French ochre and you can see that I can get some more of these type of Indian yellows the nickel azo yellows um, just in those mixes I'm mixing the lemon yellow with Sedona here as well um, so like my replacement for burnt sienna and you can see those beautiful more warmer yellows if I if I want those and then this is the hematite and French ochre which I absolutely love 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 um, that mix and I use that for like buildings that beautiful patinaed stonework and then I was just mixing the shell pink with the French ochre and let's see so I think I'm mixing the shell pink with the Sedona and then now I'm mixing opera rose with Sedona and you can see that just mixing these colors I can get these really subtle um, like tertiary colors that are just so pretty and you know very they're not ones that come in a tube you know I've had to really look for colors that will create uh, these colors that I wanted and so you can see that I just did the composed green with the cobalt turquoise and how beautiful that is and yeah I've just mixed the different blues and greens and um, the different the different opera rose with the two blues so yeah you can see that there's really a lot of variety just within this limited palette so I would highly recommend if you are starting and and you want to start somewhere those colors will really um, get you off to a really nice start so what we're going to do now is we're taking my printables and this is actually just the 101 oh, this might be the petite maison um, printable and we are, I so I I took that as inspiration and then I created a like a larger sort of Louis style sh chase and um, I am starting with a mix of indigo and shell pink to get this really muted smoky kind of lavender color and then we're going to very very lightly start uh, washing onto the painting so I, I I really really like to glaze paintings in very light soft washes and then build it up that way so you know there's so many different ways to paint so I kind of show you my techniques but the really amazing thing about painting and the you know I think it's one of the nicest things about painting is that your style is a collection of all of the things that you enjoy about painting so it becomes the colors that you like to use it becomes the 
paintbrush that you like to use, the way you create the brush strokes, the subjects that you enjoy painting. So all of those things combine um, to create your style. So certainly like I show you kind of one way and there are many ways, you know, some people like to do very bright and bold um, paintings and that is a totally different um, style to me but that's a really wonderful way to paint as well so you know just bear that in mind that you do not have to um, worry if you like painting a different way because you know that's completely wonderful so um, yeah so one of the things I wanted to point out here is that I am using um, the limited color palette but I'm combining and mixing colors so that everything has these same subtle undertones so when I used the French ochre for the uh, woodwork I'm also mixing a little bit of shell pink in which the shell pink is also mixed with the indigo um, for like the velvet um, kind of fabric so I'm using you know the same colors to bring that sort of continuity and um, yeah create you know create that really nice uh, cohesive feeling so I also mixed the shell pink in with the Sedona to um, start creating these other um, colors and shadows in the you know in the cushions and so I'm using shell pink in this instance almost as a shadow color uh, yeah and you can see here how subtly and gradually that I am still building this up and it and it, it does take time so if you're feeling like um, you finish your painting and it's not bright enough then or or if you get to the bright part too um, quickly then you know that could also be a, a different thing so those are just things to consider as well and then so I'm starting to create these shadows around the woodwork and once I and you can also see that I use the pencil so I'm using a credit color uh, watercolor pencil to do this but you know you can also use just a watercolor pencil in the same uh, tone or like uh, color that you are using and then I am I mixed a little bit of Sedona, Sedona and Indigo I think to get that sort of grey colour there that I am using and then I just started adding little bits of the Sedona in to really brighten that up. Um, so this has probably had six layers of watercolour uh, at this stage and then I am going back in with so I've decided to actually bring in an extra color. I don't know if you'd call it a color, but um, I wanted to add some pearl white into the indigo here for the shadow. I really, really love the unexpected in the shadows. And so I feel like uh, very often, like we undervalue the importance of, not, not just the importance, but like, the opportunity in that shadow so you know if you look around or if you go out in the garden when there's like the sun's coming through the leaves and you can look at different uh, shadows that are being created and they're very often not gray and they're not static so you know there's light bouncing all around there's color bouncing all around so I think that is a really important thing to think about maybe you know maybe you, you don't want to either but which is fine but I really like to um, just add those shadows and you can see here when I'm adding the gold like if there's a little part of the watercolor blending that I really like I just don't add the gold there as well so um, it's not a solid line when I'm adding the gold and you could see there that I didn't use my nib pen I also used the da Vinci liner brush and that just helps uh, give it a more a little bit looser and more painterly feel so you can see those are the four colors that we used and also pearl white which I didn't swatch there but um, you can see that this painting does not look like we've used indigo you know like a burnt sienna um, 
like an ochre it doesn't it doesn't look like that and that is why I've specifically chosen those colors because I can mix them to be really subtle and beautiful variations uh, and so I really like to start with bright um, colors and I'm, and I'm really careful you know which ones I choose uh, so that I can mute them and mix them and neutralize them you know whichever way I like so I liked the painting right here and I wasn't sure I really liked the shadow but I ended up just going for it and that's one of the decisions that you make as well like you know should I save it should I keep going um, I think I could have just painted around the shadow maybe or done something different but and also um, I think the left side is a little bit too high it looks almost like a wonky um, it should have been anyway don't judge me for that it was pretty late when I was doing this so yes if you want to like try and recreate it I would suggest that like the left side should be a little bit um, shorter you know so I could take another four colors from that palette and create a whole nother um, painting uh, that would also not look like you know it had come from that palette and, and those colors so and, and another four and another four so that is what I really enjoy about that and and um, you know there's so many different ways to create palettes and to decide kind of how you want the palette to facilitate your work so you could just have you know one color and I showed in my like all my palettes video I have a little palette just for purples and I have a little palette that's for more like pastel neutrals like more apricots peach tones and um, you know so there's so many different ways that you can customize a palette to create um, what you need and you also can absolutely mix brands like I have always mixed brands and unless you find two things that do not mix well then you know you'll have to reconsider that but yeah I have found that the ones that I you know have chosen all all mix really well so um, so this is a plain air palette that I created recently and I, I really really love this and so we do a painting um, with this so I am hoping to get out and do uh, some painting we'll see how that goes okay so yeah um, I you can see that before I begin I always just like to wet just with my paintbrush I just wet the colors with a drop of water and let them reactivate so this first one is one of my colors but you can use something like a black with a pearl white or a um, shimmer iron glimmer from Wallace and Seymour or from KW Arts on Etsy and then the second one is also one of mine that's my like Rembrandt's easel color and that is like the darkest brown I can find mixed with like a shimmer iron glimmer so you can mix something like that or mix like a dark brown with a pearl white again this one um, the blue one is just Daniel Smith indigo and then this one here is from Crema. this is iron glimmer violet it's a really beautiful one so yeah I really really love this they had a sale before Christmas and I got a couple of these and they came in a few months later but yeah they're really really lovely so this one was also one of mine and this is the um, I don't know I don't know if I named this one but it's just a really lovely um, one that would be like a porphyry violet ochre and then this one here is the crema pink color which again is so beautiful and also KW Arts has a beautiful pink color and then this one here is one of mine which is actually in the we're going to use this in the painting today and it's also in one of the in the landscape set available in the shop today so this one's also in that set and this one is um, well you could you could kind of create this with like a burnt sienna or a sedona with a pearl white but they've got a little bit more grain in them because that's what I'm looking for um, then this one is Daniel Smith French ochre my trusty Daniel Smith French ochre 
I really like this one because it's very um, transparent so it's not heavy when I mix it with things it still gives them a nice light bright uh, quality and then this one is the Isero pink I think it's just or Isero rose uh, this one here is the Crema Carmine Nacarat and I have actually already replaced that one with um, something I'll talk about later. This is the Cobalt Violet, the Wallace and Seymour Cobalt Violet and you can also use you know, any Cobalt Violet. Um, this one here is the Schmincke Ice Blue, which I absolutely love. We're going to use this in the painting and I'll show you some different ways to mix that. But it's so beautiful. This one here is a also one of mine. Uh, but you could use like a blue with pearl white. So a lot of pearl white, a little bit of blue, and then maybe a touch of ultramarine or something like that, or a touch of purple, um, ultramarine violet. This one is also one of mine. This one is in the landscape set today as well. And this was also in the Cinequinon palette. And then this one is the Wallace and Seymour Honister Green Slate Pale, I want to say. And it's also, you c it's very similar to the um, Lichen Green from, hmm, from Earth Mineral Arts so again I'll try and put all this down below I know this is a lot of information and we're going quite quickly so uh, this one is the Schmincke Aqua Bronze and you can see that I've put it in this little quarter dram bottle um, yeah to just take in the palette so and I, I think I showed this and how I had to kind of put a bit of silicone in the lid in one of my uh, recent palette updates but this is, yeah, this is the palette. Um, and you can see here that like when I'm looking to create a palette, I'm looking for these different little uh, nests of color kind of thing, like different gardens of color. How can I, you know, create this feeling? How can I create this feeling? Uh, can I mix these things together? And um, yeah, I'm not necessarily like, especially uh, in this kind of a palette, I'm sort of veering away from that first template where I was doing a traditional palette. I'd, I'd say it probably still does fit that a bit, but I'm going more towards colors now that I know um, that I can use to create kind of what I what I want to create. So um, to kind of show you that you know in action, um, we my sister and I were going to Whole Foods a few weeks ago. And we passed this lake and there were just a few of these Canadian geese there and um, yeah she used to kind of have these geese that she would always feed and they would come like fly past her window and if she hadn't gone out there to feed them early enough so um, yeah it was just really nice we stopped there we were literally there for like five minutes um, but it, it just was a really nice um, moment and I wanted to, to use this and kind of show you and paint this because um, I have found it quite difficult and I have a few kind of failed attempts on the channel of like going out and doing plein air painting. It's very, very tricky and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But um, you can see here that I have kind of sketched out very loosely uh, what I want to paint in the middle and I've kind of done this more detailed frame. So I'm using the Holbein White Ibis. I really love this paper. It's got cotton paper. And this is the small one. So I showed you this in a Christmas haul. And um, yeah, we painted some of these things in, in here. And we've, you know, swatched and things. And I got an, a larger one actually so that I can do some more kind of just different more tutorials. I was trying to figure out should I get loose paper or should I get a larger sketchbook so I ended up going for this one and um, yeah so I'm using the Da Vinci mop brush it's got the ethograph on the end so it's like a silver point but you don't have to have any grounds for it so it's really nice but you know any mop brush will do you just need something large enough to fill the paper with water basically so and I'm not filling the entire paper I've broken it up so that I am uh, just painting the top 
sort of the sky and the tree line there above the pond I am not um, I didn't wet the pond yet so I am and you can see that the colors I'm using from this palette are very very soft so I feel like I am talking a lot I have just a lot of information that I want to sort of share about this um, subject and then hopefully the next video will be a little bit more like painting and listening to the music uh, but so you can see that I'm using these soft pale greens and then I'm also mixing the French ochre in to get more of like the sap greens or green golds um, you can see that like in this palette I don't have many of those bright colors that are in the other palette this is a little bit more subdued but I do have uh, some unexpected things with the with the shimmer colors and sort of textured colors so yeah but for this painting I decided that I wanted the colors to be very soft and very um, just delicate and and really nice like um, create a different feeling and you can see here that I used that iron glimmer with the um, the green actually and it kind of muted it and made it this nice milky milky color so it was really pretty and then I just used that to begin blocking in the tree trunks and just like the other painting this is going to take layers uh, and so as one one layer dries you can either continue to like re-wet that area and add another glaze of another you know layer of color or you can start to dry brush and things like that so we'll go through that but um, at the minute I've just added that that really soft color in the trunk and I've gone back and gotten some more color to just add in parts of the trunk so you can see that I'm not like um, just blocking in an entire trunk I'm trying to create different um, highlights and shadows and bark on you know within even just these first brush strokes so I'm also getting the um, the paper towel here and drying the brush and just kind of I need to like you can see where that is getting a little bit unruly and it's going places that I don't want it I can just easily you know to, uh, bring that back and you can see here the sky was floating into the trunk which was also just a really pretty moment and that's why I really love um, watercolor so I have also used and I was I wasn't sure about this but I used the um, that shimmery color to do the bank the the opposite bank of the pond and I actually quite like how it's kind of like this silvered ribbon um, that draws your eye across the page and okay so uh, I have kind of done enough on the top now for the first layers and so I wanted to start on the lake so you can see that I I have um, wet it and then I am getting the ice blue and I am mirror reflecting where the tree line is so you can see that I'm I will start there and I'll look at where that tree line is and then I go down and I am kind of off centering it a little bit or offsetting um, where that will go so I'm leaning it a little bit more to the left and um, yeah sort of pulling those curves down down towards the, the bottom of the page rather than just in a straight line across the page if that um, if that makes sense and then I am just getting similar colors and I'm trying to put those in similar areas so I am not um, exactly particular about this because you do have the water and wind and different things so you know you might get that a little bit different but yeah I just um, if you want to do it exactly right you can like um, just be really cautious in making sure that those same colors are matched in the um, water below Okay, so I think the next part's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, so I'll let you watch for a minute and then I'll come back when there's something else to talk about.
Okay, so this is the next day and you can see the paper kind of dried and it curled up there at the end. So you do want to um, put some clips on the paper or something like that. But I am also pulling out my other plain air palettes. So these are the two that I would be taking. So one has like my brighter colors and I have a video about that. And then this one, um, you know, has more muted colors and different colors but um, what I needed from this palette was the hematite so I realized that I really do need that um, and I might put it in this palette or even just a dob of it in the lid or something like that but um, so I just wanted to paint these little park benches they were stone Okay, so I am I'm I'm looking for a shadow color to use around the blues here in the in the frame. So I don't want to um, create a more saturated blue. I just want something that will kind of be a really nice shadow. So you can see there that I've taken the ice blue. I put some of the violet glimmer in there and then I put some of the Isero Rose in and then I ended up putting the indigo in so I um, you know was just kind of trying to figure out here what I don't want to do is make these look you know a, a darker more saturated blue like a cobalt blue or something I just want it to still be this powder blue but I've got to try and figure out with my shadows how to uh, bring more life to it and how to bring more um, depth to it so that's what I kind of decided to go for here and yeah again this could have used more layers but I think I just ran out of time um, well I know I, I, I finished this um, late Friday afternoon and I, I think it like I know it needed more work but yeah I just I couldn't do any more so um, yeah you can definitely you know continue to build this up and what was I going to say as far as the way that I created the frames um, I do have a couple of videos about um, that creating the emblems um, you can see here that I am using the pink color and then again I'm using the ice blue to tint that so it's like a tinted white and it's just making the color a little bit more it's just giving it a little bit of something really lovely um, so yeah uh, I have found that I, I've been using that ice blue to mix with everything um, but what was I saying oh yeah so as far as the um, the frame goes around the sides um, I got I, I got inspired for that from 
old um, like the Limoges antique plates so you can totally look up you know images of those um, and yeah I just used some of those types of motives that they have on there and just created um, a lot of different curves and um, kind of like ruffles that they're, they're like ceramic ruffles basically um, yeah so and what I was really excited about here was that I finally had a painting that I could use the Sennelier um, silver it's kind of like more of an antique silver so it's a really really pretty ink and I always use the gold one because like I said it's a warm yellow and it just warms up the painting but this one really called for something icy and that kind of to enhance the powdery blue and that really pretty um, soft colors so yeah I was really happy that I could uh, use this ink and then this is the Daniel Smith Tiger's Eye so this is what I actually ended up replacing that carmine with I and also I am using this old um, brush this is a Princeton quarter uh, anyway I'll try and remember to link it below but I use this brush I used to use it a lot when I first started and then I found that didn't hold enough water um, for what I was trying to do so I use this a lot for glue and for acrylics and just for everything but I found that I really like it for um, to create the, these sort of grass patches um, but I think it's pretty scratchy on the paper so it might damage the paper I'm not sure but anyway I just used it here and so what I was saying about the Daniel Smith Tigers I was I got a new tube and the old tube I had was probably at least five years old and it's I feel like it's completely different and I think a few of you said um, you'd also heard other people say it was different as well and this is more like an olive brown which I really like but I, I did put it in this palette to use it like an olive brown like a green umber type color so I really wish they would but I really love I mean like I'm happy for the color but I wish they would just call that a green olive and then or a brown olive and then give us back the tiger's eye because I really love the old tiger's eye but anyway so this is where I'm at with the painting at this stage um, and yeah I think I I think at this stage I I, I knew that it needed a few more layers and a few more things but I just I ran out of time So one thing I'm trying to show you here is that it's not smooth strokes that I am doing on the barky. It's like little tiny kind of, um, I am sort of pulling it along and, and pulling it off the paper and then putting it back on the paper. And I think that's one thing as well that uh, practicing lettering will also help you with um, your brush strokes. So if you've ever tried um, brush lettering with a kind of a brush pen or using the, a nib pen uh, that difference in pressure and that difference in line work I think really comes in handy when you're uh, painting so here I am sort of so in the beginning we were doing wet on wet so we were putting water on the paper 
and then putting paint on the paper and that was all wet and then we were adding you know a wet medium but I've left the, the paper dry today a lot and then I'm mixing so I'm mixing a little bit of indigo in with this green this kind of it's already a sage green but I'm kind of trying to get more that eucalyptus green color to uh, deepen up some of the tree here Okay, so this is where we ended up like I said it could have used a few more layers and a bit of deepening up but not necessarily in the color saturation more just in the values so um, just little subtle um, value shifts here and there to you know to create a little bit more depth um, in the painting but yeah I'm really happy with this and I just wanted to kind of show you how you can take a moment, you can take a photo and then you can recreate that, you know, in a way that you would like people to see that and feel that and understand that. Um, yeah, and I think uh, that's what I was going to say as well. It's quite difficult. Actually, we'll talk about it in the next video. Um, so plain air painting we'll talk a little bit about that in the next video but this is the so the bottom one there is the one that we'll do in the Roman Schmalls video and I'll show you and I guess I've kind of done like a cool toned version and then that's more of a warm toned one and so I'll show you with the Roman Schmalls colors how you can also paint a similar thing so I want to show you how and I wasn't going for the same color scheme but just a similar just kind of the same um, moment re reimagined um, yeah and I I just want to show you as well how you can build like this is another palette that I'm kind of building slowly um, and I really enjoy their paints as well so they're affordable and they're available and so yeah I, I do highly recommend them Okay, so we are up to the last part of the video. This is um, the shop update part. So there will be three different sets available with you can see like half pans and full pans. So this is the Mermaid Rouge set. It will have the four half pan set and then there'll be the option for the four full pan set. So you can see here that they're not quite dry but the top layer is dry and so I'm struggling to get um, color off this is not the time that you should be trying to use the color but I just kind of wanted you to see them in action but yeah this isn't this isn't really working so the first couple of colors here then they're a lot more textured than they're showing up here but um, yeah I'll show you a different um, a different thing of them but this um, the second color was in the sine qua non set and then the third color, the peachy one, uh, is a similar one to that was in another set, but it's got a pearlescent um, shimmer added to it. And then the pink one was not going to be, the hot pink one wasn't going to be in this set, but I've had quite a few requests for it, so I wanted to put it in this set. Um, so yes, there's just the four in this set. And... Um, yeah, as far as these go, I, I really enjoyed making them. I and I think I'm not going to do like as many freebies 
um, as I you know normally do just to get these sets out so there will still be a few freebies but I'm just going to try and condense it so I'm gonna say pre-orders will be three to six weeks but I'm hoping that I can have them out within the three to three and a half week mark so we'll see how we go there um, this is the second set this is the oyster set so I was thinking of calling this maybe dreaming of Prague or something like that but I just think the oyster set really um, is kind of what it is it's all my favorite kind of smoky lavender grays this one is a little bit like a hematite violet but I think it's got a little bit more pinky um, undertones to it so basically what I've done with this particular set is I have not necessarily modeled it after but my inspiration was um, the pastels you know when they they have the one pastel color and the whole tints of that color or shades of that color you can see like that second color is just a beautiful warm gray it's so gorgeous so then this one is this one was in another set with a light blue mica added to it the velvet rain and then the first one may have been in another set but all the others are new um, but they are similar to things that may have been in other sets as well. But I thought um, this is just such a really, really lovely way to add shadows and shading to your paintings. So yeah, it basically goes from the darkest down to the really pretty palest, almost white. And yeah, I, I really love this set. So yeah, uh, and again, it will have the half pan or the full pan variation the and there are six so six half pans or six full pans um, and yeah I love this one this is really like my version of greys or like of my version of like paints greys kind of thing um, and yeah so I'm very very happy with how they turned out and then this one is the landscape set so we used quite a few of these colors today um, in our landscape and yeah I just I really really love these so especially the first two um, I I find them very exciting to use and just really um, I love the textures of them and so yeah you can see those both of those we used in the painting today this one is like a beautiful blueberry color with a pearlescent so there's actually four pigments to get that color and then this one here is a really lovely kind of lavender blue and if you mix that with a lot of pearl white then you're going to get uh, something close to what we used today but you have that variation like you can use it darker or you can pare it down and then the last one was the green that we used today which I absolutely love I'm going I'm flying through that so yeah I hope you guys like these uh, they will be in the shop heirloom Lux on Etsy at 4 30 Eastern Standard Time this afternoon okay see you in the next video bye